we are pleased to invite you all to this webinar organized jointly by american society of civil engineers and builders association of india as a co-organizers we take this privilege to have our expert speaker dr mustafa marshall from us who is also professor in edoha state university to have accepted our invitation to be the expert speaker for today we also welcome our patron dr k n gunalan uh, from us and he was the president of american society of uh, civil engineers in 2020 dr ilas saya from ue has also been courteous and has he has extended his support for the program we all welcome him also also we welcome our convener engineer ravindran g ringshial president aca iswr and dr anand gupta chairperson housing and rera committee builder session of india now is the time for our national anthem i request all the dignitaries to stand at their own location in respect of the national anthem we cannot hear mr om prakash please we have to switch on the this thing pause it go back again and uh, sharing you have to uh, make the option sound on is the audio not aud is is the sound not audible no, no no you have to choose you have to choose to share your computer audio in the settings okay i will just try to uh, uh, play this just check once more and ah. i will do that ah. it's playing yeah yeah go back and start it again जाते तब शुभ आशीष मामे गाहे तब जय दाता जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे पार I take this privilege to introduce engineer Ravindra R Ringshan, who is having a thirty years of expertise in education, planning, and designing of vast different variety of civil projects. He completed his B.E. in construction engineering in nineteen ninety from University of Mumbai with distinction. He, he he was in us and he returned to india in 1992 with his masters in construction management and structures to join his family owned construction business mr ravindran has successfully executed many projects some of which are 
वर्ल्ड बैंक एडेड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोडक्ट्स सच एस ट्रीटमेंट एंड पंपिंग सीवरेज प्लांट्स एंड वाटर रिजर्वर्स पाइल फाउंडेशन प्रोजेक्ट्स माइक्रो पाइल्स स्टोन कॉलम्स एंकर्स कास्टिंग सीटो पाइल्स ही हैज बीन पार्ट ऑफ द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रेसिडेंशियल बिल्डिंग्स अप टू 40 स्टोरीज स्ट्रक्चरल रिपेयर्स एंड रिनोवेशंस पाइप लेइंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट एज कंसल्टेंट्स as consultant for metro project and smart city project for kandla in gujarat and faizabad smart city is being handled by him he is associated also with goregaon mulun link road india's one of the biggest diameter tunnel he is also been associated with a tunnel project of 14.5 meter diameter in 3 by 2 road tunnel he is a active member of american society of civil engineers in india he, and he has worked for various committees for american society of civil engineers and has successfully successfully organized more than 150 events he is also associated with many national and international technical associations ravindran is married 30 years ago with dipaka dipshika and he has two daughters akansha anushka and a son aryan now i request mr ravindran to give welcome note for the seminar today morning thank you rajpal saab ji for uh, lovely introduction uh a uh, today's patron dr guna immediate past ac president today's expert speaker dr mustafa masal associate professor in the department of civil and environmental engineering in adoha in state university usa distinguished guests dr elias from uae uh, mr tom smith ac usa miss Nevis AC USA, Mr. Ramesh from Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Rajendra Pawar, uh, Past Secretary Water Resources Department, Maharashtra, Mr. Gordon Blood USA, Mr. Ram Chandani, Past Joint Managing Director, MSRDC, Mr. Carlos from Mexico, distinct, distinct. Uh, dignitaries from water resource department maharashtra and fellow cement association of india dignitaries present from pen india and all over world students and my dear friends a warm good evening to all of you well to few a warm good morning it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome one and all to this international webinar on precast technology organized by american society of civil engineers india sixth and western region along with builder association of india as co organizer the entire board and myself are honored to have all of you today american so american society of civil engineers is world largest and oldest civil engineers society the society with with its head quarter located at Eastern Virginia USA would be celebrating its 170th anniversary in the year 2023 AC is well known for its many contribution to the society one such very important contribution is making US infrastructure report card other contributions are laying down codes and standard conducting regular events AC is first to reach out and give assistance during many natural disaster globally ac is also constantly referred to by us president and other authorities for formulating and guiding policies regarding civil engineering nationwide friends due to geographical size of india a need of proper representation to western india was felt and thus during 1999 western region group of ac was formed with me as one of the 
founder member among among 20 founder members. The main focus of ASC India's section restoration is same as that of ASC, that is to contribute to the improvement of the image of civil engineers and make their contribution to the society more effective. Keeping this in mind, and also to have more effective contribution during my installation as a president of Western region for the second term, it was proposed to get associated with other like-minded association. Today's event uh, webinar is one such event with BAI. I look forward for many such collaboration with BAI and other local association. As I said, let's start. Let's start with small step, one at a time to make a difference. Let us start joint hand and make more such joint events for the betterment of the society in general. Builder Association of India is the body of all infrastructure developer and real estate developer in the in country since 1941. Presently, they have more than around 20,000 business houses as their diet members and over 100,000 affiliated members spread over 200 centers in the country. Government of India and many state government cons consult BAI for formulating construction policy and make budget provisions. I know friends, it's really a tough time during this pandemic, but the positive side is that geographic boundaries has no meaning to most of us. I have traveled, as I say, I, as I, I have traveled globally without stepping out of my house. But as a civil engineer, especially field engineers, we need to go to go for forefront. We, we just cannot execute project staying inside our house. We need to go out in field, take risk, not only of our life, but also life of entire family. As a civil engineer, we need to work safely, not only with work environment, but also uh, we have to be vigilant against virus to keep our nation move forward for the betterment of society as a whole. In that sense, and I think we all would agree that we, the civil engineers, are two uh, frontline warriors. I know we all are eager waiting to hear our expert speaker, and I will not take much time. With a very warm welcome to all once again, I request MC, Mr. Raspat, to carry forward the program. Mr. Chandrakan Raspat is a civil engineer from Builder Institute of Technology uh, uh, from 1986 batch. He owns multiple business and is a very active BI member. So over to you, Mr. Raspat Ji. Thank you, Mr. Ravindran. And again, thank you for giving an excellent uh, introduction of uh, both uh, American Society and Builders Association of India. I am finding 253 participants right now here, many of whom may not be knowing about both their sessions. You will get great exposure for them. And uh, it is a fact that civil engineers are frontline workers always, because whenever required, we have to be there. We cannot be working uh, online and uh, submitting our projects. Uh, with this small note, uh, I will request Dr. Ilas Saya, who is the Regional 10 Director of American Society of Civil Engineers from UAE to introduce Dr. Kanchipuram M. Gunalam. Over to Dr. Ilas Saya. Dr. Ilas, you are muted. Ah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I do appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Ravendran, thank you for your introduction about ASCE. And I want to just mention one thing. The best medicine for the COVID 2019 was invented by a civil engineer. And everyone was saying 
the best cure is to stay home. And home was invented by a civil engineer. So thank you all for your participation. It gave me a great honor and pleasure to introduce Dr. Gunalan for this presentation. As I call Dr. Gunalan and his wife Duru are the honorable ambassador for India in the whole world, as well as the honorable ambassador of ASCE to the whole world. Dr. Gunalan has a bachelor degree in civil engineering and master degree in soil mechanics and foundation from the oldest engineering school in India, namely College of Engineering, Gundai in Chennai, India. He obtained a PhD in civil engineering from Texas Tech University. He is currently a senior vice president at ECOM based in Salt Lake City. Prior to his uh, work, he was a vice president at Parson Grove, managing its alternative tunneling center of excellence. He has delivered many successful multi-billion dollar program and projects around the country. He has been active in various professional societies, such as the American Society of Civil Engineers, and he has served as the president of the ASCE for 2020 and the World Federation of Engineering, WFEO, wherein is currently serving as its chair of the United Nations Relationship Committee. Uh, Dr. Guna is a distinguished engineer of Edward E. Whitcairs Junior College of Engineering of Texas Tech University, and he has been recognized as ASCE Region 8 and Utah Section Engineer of the Year. He has presented on several topics around the world, including UN Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, Future World Vision, Engineering of the Future, Sustainability and Resistance, Code of Ethics, and more. Dr. Kuna is married to Dr. Duro, and he has a son and a daughter, very successful biotechs in the United States. It gives me a great honor to give the floor to Dr. Guna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Elias. I now request uh, Mr. Elias to give the bookcase to Dr. Guna. It is a symbolic uh, representation on the web itself now. I yeah, request thank Mr. you. Mr. Guna, to kindly take over the stage, please. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Rajpat. <clears throat> thank you, Elias, for the kind introduction. And good evening to all of you. And, uh, you know, Ravindra has been very persistent. And uh, I would like to, you know, thank all of you and uh, in the India section for your hospitality. And, uh, probably be remiss to also acknowledge Professor Ravi Sinha, <coughs> a past president of the India section, Western region as well. It gives me a great pressure to introduce our guest speaker today because Mustafa, you know, when he was approached earlier on, he very voluntarily agreed to and accepted to make this presentation and we moved the dates around a few times to fit in with the schedule of uh, the various groups. And he was very gracious and kind to accommodate all of our requests. Dr. Mustafa is a tenured associate professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Idaho State University here in the US a neighboring state to mine in Utah. He's a fellow and faculty at the Center of Advanced Energy Studies, working on projects in collaboration with Idaho National Laboratory. Mustafa is a faculty advisor for ASE student chapter. And thank you for doing that as well, Mustafa. Mustafa obtained his undergraduate degree from Kabul University, his master's from Buffalo State, and his PhD from Canterbury, University of Canterbury in New Zealand. 
He's a certified professional engineer in the state of Idaho and an international professional engineer from New Zealand in buildings and bridges. He is a certified by the Structural Engineering Certification Board as well in the United States. He has a number of years of consulting experience both in Afghanistan, New Zealand, and the United States. He's a recipient of several awards, including the 2020 Alfred Nobel Prize from ASCE. And I had the unique privilege of handing him the 2018 ASC Southern Idaho Section Outstanding Civil Engineering of the Year Award as well. He's a member of several organizations, including ASCE, ACI, PCI, TRB Standards Technical Committees here in the US. He has done a lot of research and consulting and his area of specialties among other things includes accelerated bridge construction, precast concrete, earthquake engineering, low damage seismic design and so on. When Ravindra approached and asked if you could find somebody with the knowledge and the experience and expertise in precast concrete, you know, the first person that came to my mind was Professor Mustafa, because I'd visited with him and also heard a lot about the laboratory and the research that is being done by him in his university in Pocatello, which is just down the road from Salt Lake City, Utah. And it is a very appropriate topic as uh, Ravi pointed out and others, and also Professor Tom Isley from Purdue, because to me, precast concrete does a couple of different things. One, it's part of the accelerated construction in today's environment where everybody wants everything done today rather than tomorrow. You know, it provides an opportunity for accelerated construction. And more importantly, I think Elias and others would appreciate it in the sense that if for a, in a precast environment, you have a better control over the quality control and quality assurance of the products that gets out into the field, as opposed to cast in place type of an environment. So I know in India with the metros and other projects, there are a lot of stuff going on in India in, in the precast side and post tensioning and so on. And from that perspective, I think this topic of precast in mass construction is very appropriate. And from Prof. Prof. Dr. Anand Guttaji and uh, BAI's perspective, I think precast concrete makes more sense in the large scale housing projects and other types of commercial, uh, not only residential, but commercial and industrial constructions too. So, uh, Prof. Mustafa, Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to speak. And more importantly, thank you for accommodating the changes in schedule. I know it's early in the morning in Idaho, just like what it is here in Utah for me. And thank you for being here. And we are looking forward to a very interesting and enlightening presentation this morning. Thank you. And thank you to all of you. Thank you to India, ASC, India Section Western Region. I know. Um, Polo G from Southern region is also online listening to this. And I'm assuming representatives from other regional uh, ASC sections are also online. Uh, thank you all for being here and thank you for hosting the session this morning. I hope it is uh, very educational and enlightening for everybody in India. Thank you. With that, Mustafa. Thank you so much, Dr. Guna, for the kind introduction. I appreciate it. And um, I can start sharing my screen, I assume, now? Well, we are officially supposed to give you the bouquet of flowers. <laughs> <word to it. laughs> Thank you. Please accept it as a, as a small token of our gratitude for you being here this morning. Thank you. I, I agree. I accept it. Thanks. So, um, I'm gonna start sharing my screen here. And uh, if, if you could uh, confirm that you see my full screen, that would be great. Yes. Yes, yes, yes we can see. Okay. And, well, and, good and, and, a, and, and a beautiful shot of the 
Wasatch Front as well. So <laughs> exactly, yeah, that's where uh, your hometown is now. There. So um, good evening, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very um, happy to be here talking with you. And as Dr. Guna mentioned, my name is Mustafa Mashal, and I work at Idaho State University. And today I'll be talking to you about discovering high performance precast. Uh, I would like to thank the AAC India section and BAI for organizing this and uh, inviting me to um, spend a few moments with you. Uh, I have been to India, by the way, uh, and I have very good memories. And I do speak and understand Hindi. So toward the end of their question that you would like to ask in Hindi, I'll try to practice my Hindi too. And with that one, um, start the presentation today. So these are the learning objectives for the seminar today. We're gonna to be defining what high performance structures are. And then we're gonna discuss the advantages and long-term physical and economic benefits of high performance uh, design. And then we'll try to also explain that in these, the concept for resiliency, and then uh, toward the end, learn how high performance building envelopes, QA, QC practice work for precast, and at the same time, elaborate on trends in precast concrete education. So starting from uh, the fundamental, what is concrete? Concrete is a composite material. And uh, as you know, it's composed of many elements. And those elements are basically the cement, water, aggregates, admixtures, and air. Now, the quality of a concrete is gonna be as good as the ingredients in it. So those ingredients that I have listed, if they are good quality, and then you're following up the right uh, methodology for mixing and quality control, you will get better concrete at the end of the day as well. So what is precast concrete then? Well, precast concrete is defined according to American Concrete Institute as concrete that is cast elsewhere than its final position. And if you see the difference between precast and cast in place and precast, we have all these elements, structural elements uh, cast in a prefabricated yard where the quality is maintained throughout the whole construction. And it's way different than cast in place. And then once this uh, products are produced, you can see they are stored in the uh, yard of precast. And from there, they're gonna make their ways to on-site assembly. This photo shows a good difference between cast in place and precast concrete. The upper photo shows the typical operation when you have concrete pouring on site, the, the trucks and everything, and then a whole bunch of vibration going on, while the precast one on the lower side showing you that everything has been made inside a factory and stored there. Now, what kind of concrete are common uh, for precast concrete? Most precasters in the United States, they use high strength concrete. And high strength concrete is defined as any concrete with compressive strength of 6,000 PSI, which is equivalent to 41.4 uh, megapascal uh, at 28 days. There are two ways that precasters in the United States um, do um, use concrete. They're wet casting and then there's dry cast. Wet cast is flowable concrete. And majority of precaster use self-consolidated concrete, SCC, where there's no need of vibration because it has plasticizer. If you see the sample SCC pour, as soon as you pour the concrete, it just is so runny and it just goes everywhere and fills the void in the form and there's no need of vibration uh, at all, unless there's some controlled spots that you want to make sure that there's no voids left. The dry casting, also known as low or no slum concrete, these are mostly used for concrete pipes on hollow core. Basically, there's no slump. This mix is a very, very dense. And you see the difference in the photos shown below between conventional concrete SCC and dry cast. So uh, you can see conventional concrete slump versus dry cast, which is pretty much zero slump if you make a cone out of it. And then SCC that there, it's super runny. And instead of doing a slump test, you actually do a spread test on it. There are two types of precast products in the United States. And these products normally tied to two big uh, institutes here. There is a precast pre-stress concrete institute, also known as PCI. And I have put the link for them on this slide here. PCI products are mostly above the ground precast products. And those include, for instance, I-beam structural wall panels, architectural panels. So anything above the ground that you see is likely that it's going to be, a, uh, if it's precast, is going to be a PCI product. Then we also have the National Precast Concrete Association, NPCA. 
their products are mostly underground. And these can include tunneling system and the railroad tracks for grain transport and loading, box culvert, septic tank, gravity, grease interceptor, biofiltration basins for low impact development stormwater project, utility structures, the stormwater retention system, precast concrete sound walls, gravity retaining walls, mechanically stabilized earth wall panels, gravity blocks, precast concrete paving slabs, which is a new product, manholes and precast concrete pipes. These are some of the products, but there are a very long list of other precast products that NPCA produces. From these products, I just wanna elaborate on one of them, um, uh, which is becoming more popular nowadays, and that is the uh, precast concrete paving slabs. So precast concrete paving slabs are a newer product in the precast industry. This is pavement repair system that will install fast uh, to mitigate traffic congestion, but also provides a long lasting repair. Precast concrete paving systems are basically prefabricated offsite and controlled conditions and delivered to the job site fully cured and ready to be installed during low traffic periods. Most times these are installed overnight. The damaged pavement is cut out and removed and the new slab is dropped into place with dowels to connect and transfer loads to adjacent pavement. They can be leveled with fast setting grout that can be injected. Drivers can then return to those very roads almost immediately following installation many times the next morning. And you can use this kind of product uh, for not only um, horizontal curves, but you can use them for three-dimensional surfaces, intersections, changing crown lines, utility intensive pavement, instrumented application, heavy skewed bridge approach slabs, as well as airfield applications. If you take a look at this sketch, there are 15 precast concrete products in this slide alone. You can see the products that are above the ground and the products that you have under the ground. And that's why it's very important to differentiate between PCI and NPC products and be familiar with both. So what is pre-stressed concrete? Well, as you know, concrete is a strong in compression, but weak in tension. It's about one tenth of its compression strength and uh, tension. That's why we have to put reinforcing in concrete. Pre-stressing is basically a method of reinforcement where high strength steel strand is pulled into tension and then the tensile stress is released into concrete after the concrete has reached the necessary compressive strength. It depends how much tension you put in those strands. That's design process normally for half an inch diameter strands, the force is between 20,000 to 30,000 pounds. And this application, as some of you already know, can be either post-tensioning or could be pre-tensioning. There are advantages associated when it comes to pre-stressed precast concrete. It gives you accelerated construction, gives improved quality and durability, less traffic disruption, enhanced construction site safety, less environmental impacts, less labor costs at the construction site, use of machinery, increases load carrying capacity. Because of the pre-stressing, you can actually put more loads on it. You can go for longer spans with it, less deflection and also it reduces cracks with again improves your durability and it ends up with smaller sections. Now, what are the cost benefits or overall where the cost reduction comes with precasting compared to casting place? Well, for structural members, if you standardize the sections, you can repeatedly use the molds and that way you can also avoid construction of new precast bed. These are substantial investment for a precaster if they want to do it and that's how it the cost of precast can go really high. So if you have a standardized section and you can repeat uh, the process of using the mold, that way you can save uh, quite a number of uh, money on it actually. Now, in order to know some of the standard section, at least in the United States, I have put the links. It depends if it's a building design or it's a bridge design. For instance, on the right side, you see the five, uh, the six type of uh, I-beams uh, that we call them ASHTO, standard ASHTO I-beams. It uh, depends on uh, how, uh, deep they are. We also have other products like single T, double T, hollow core, solid, and uh, solid slab and others. Uh, I'm not sure why it's uh, marking my screen. Sorry. Okay, I hope this is fine now. Uh, savings on fresh concrete can also, you know, some of these precast plants have 
uh, basically their own batch plan. So you don't have to get concrete from elsewhere. That can also give you some saving. And then efficiency at site, energy and operational thermal can reduce the cost because we're talking about life cycle cost of a structure, not only the initial cost. And remember that when you have precast concrete, most of the time it doesn't require painting, plaster, uh, and it doesn't rust or degrade and there are fewer joints and is pest or UV resistant to. And there's reduced construction time, which again saves you money and reduced maintenance and life cycle cost. So those are the typical places where precasting can give you uh, cost saving. <clears throat> Now, precast can be used both as architectural material as well as uh, structural components. And I would like to elaborate a little bit uh, here for our designers. So precast systems are comprised of several elements such as wall panels, columns, beams, flooring, roof elements, double T and hollow core planks, even a stair system as you can see on the slide. And these consist, and then when it comes to precast components, uh, Outside the structural side, we have a whole bunch of other products for architectural precast. Architectural precast are more uh, customized, I should say. They, you don't find them standardized everywhere. It depends on projects and the architectural constraints and requirements of a project. And then for a structural precast system, let's take a look at some of these. For instance, we have columns and beams. In this picture, you can see an inverted T-beam. <clears throat> And then we have flooring and roof system usually use either as double T's or hollow core planks. And there's a variety of other elements such as a stair system, as I mentioned, and light walls, which are commonly used in parking garage structures in the United States. There are unlimited options to design efficient, cost-effective structural uh, system using precast concrete. And one of the uh, very good references for this in this country is the PCI Design Handbook. And it's the major resource and the industry basically uses it for uh, designing all types of uh, precast concrete uh, buildings. There's an equivalent uh, manual for bridges too. They call them PCI uh, bridge design manual. I believe you can actually download the bridge manual for free from the PCI website. And that uh, talks about the transportation side. Uh, we can design a structural side of things. We can design rigid frame system with load bearing columns and beams using precast concrete. For instance, on the right, you see some of the forms that might use in manufacturing and the components produced from these forms. Or we can design interior shear wall system with lateral load transferred to a structural core or exterior shear wall system because this, these tend to be more flexible, eliminating the need for a structural core and often more economical combining the load bearing function with lateral load resistance. And we can also integrate these loads bearing elements with our building enclosure requirements and architectural features. We can also span any of these with uh, horizontal PCI products such as the double T. Uh, as you can see in that building, the planks for double T can be used offering long spans and fire resistance. Or hollow core planks is another uh, common or uh, popular uh, solution for the building. It helps accelerate construction. It also allows other trades to begin their work sooner. And contractors tend to like this system uh, as it allows them to easily meet OSHA safety requirements as well for construction site. And if you incorporate, for instance, precast stairs, they also tend to be erected early in the process, accommodating train sequencing and allowing contractors to walk upstairs rather than uh, up ladders all day. The design of these structural solution is basically limitless with custom design components. They can accommodate open space, long span, based on your design requirements, things like optimal daylighting, energy efficiency, building enclosures, and high thermal mass. Now, precast concrete structures are as good as connections between them because they're basically, if you will, it's a uh, Legos basically that you're putting on site. So connections are really, really important precast concrete structures. There are technically two types of precast concrete connection that you can use. There are dry connections that basically uses welded, bolted connections, steel plates. And then we have wet connection that those are grouted or in-situ concrete. I have put the link for some uh, connections from PCI here on the slide. So for those who wanna learn more, uh, they can go there. Basically, the connection design consideration uh, is strength, dude, how strong you want that connection to be. Ductility is very important to take into account ductility if you're designing in seismic zone. Uh, volume change accommodation due to creep shrinkage and temperature change. And if you don't design those to accommodate the connections to accommodate that volume change, you're going to end up with cracking and damage in the building. Uh, durability, fire resistant, constructability, statics, seismic requirements, and tolerances are other consideration when it comes to precast concrete connections. What type of connection materials are common in the United States for connections? Uh, 
heated concrete anchors, steel shapes, uh, channels, plates, uh, angles, a reinforcing bore couplers is getting popularity in bridge applications nowadays, deformed bore anchors, bolts on threaded connectors, and spatiality insert. There are a whole bunch of proprietary products for that, and bearing pads and shims. Try to uh, put a slide on some of these typical connections that you can get for building structures. For instance, on the left side, you see how column base plate work for precast concrete buildings. And uh, there are threaded rods that are grabbed in the footing, and then you have the plate, and then there's some grouting going on on site. Or you can take a look at the right side connection beam to column with corbel. Uh, you can see it's mostly dry connections, whole bunch of plates with studs embedded inside concrete that you leave during prefabrication. And then you use those steel plates to put a jumper plate or sometimes just align them with the other element and run welding on site. So that's uh, a good example of a dry connection for precast concrete. And then so on, there are so many other connections that you can get panel to tie back or panel steel corbel support. Uh, steel structural products when it comes to precast, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, only architecture, you can actually have a total precast office. When they say to total precast, it basically means uh, that the whole system not only serves as architectural, but at the same time, they are load bearing elements and everything is all precast. And this is the Jordan Gateway Development Office building in Salt Lake City. It took only 10 weeks to erect this building back in 2007. Some other popular products for uh, precast concrete is the uh, wall panels. There are three types of wall panels basically uh, that we use here in the, in the United States. There's solid wall panel, uh, and then there's the 10 shell. I'll try to briefly tell you each one of them because each one of them uh, gives you some advantages and depends on the project. Typically the wall panel, uh, you see that blue uh, layer that's shown, that's the uh, insulation foam that we already have it inside the wall during precasting. And that's one of the reason precast concrete can be really thermally efficient because you already have your insulation embedded inside the uh, wall panel. For the tin shell on the right side, it's more architectural. So basically it's a very thin layer of concrete. Normally we use uh, GFRC, glass fiber reinforced concrete, and those are architectural cladding. And it can have either a steel frame behind it, a light steel frame, and then you can use panels to go and put cladding on buildings. Uh, then they come in various shapes out there. So, the, you know, for instance, window walls, or you can have spandrels. Uh, so these are examples of some of those uh, products that I was talking about. Uh, here's some examples of the wall type solids. And I would like to highlight that in many architectural applications, it's common to use a face mix uh, shown on the right hand picture. Uh, there's a concrete mix that may contain the more expensive aggregates, pigments, et cetera, uh, needed to achieve the statics that architecture wants, uh, the architect wants. And then a standard less expensive gray back mix is used for the rest of the panel. This helps reduce cost as well. Uh, this is an example of a museum project in Dallas, Texas that used solid wall precast construction as a uh, Perot Museum. Uh, here's another example of insulated sandwich wall. You can see the uh, insulation layer blue shown on the left. And then you have the brick veneer on the uh, outside face of the panel, but the structural concrete side is behind it. So that's why uh, for this kind of uh, wall panels, you have not only uh, thermal efficiency, but both structural and architectural aspect incorporated in the same product. Uh, this is a dormitory in Washington, D.C. is another example of project that used insulated sandwich wall uh, precast construction. Uh, it's at Catholic University Opus Hall dormitory. Uh, here's another uh, insulated wall, uh, sandwich wall panel project. Uh, the voids board from liner insulated load bearing shear walls here. And then these are some examples of the tension uh, that I mentioned before. And again, these consist of a thin layer of concrete normally between one and a half to three inches thick and typically some form of support frame behind them, normally lightweight steel frame. On the left side, you see it uses a steel stat frame system. On the right side is a foundation system that uses a concrete stat frame system. And office, these can incorporate insulation as well. The thickness of the concrete layer can vary depending on how the panels is designed. Uh, here's an example of one of those GA4C cladding architectural panels uh, for municipal offices in the United States. And one of the uh, particular application of architectural panels in the United States is with uh, religious and temple construction. And they look like marble from outside, but it's all precast concrete. So these are some of the examples uh, of LDS temples uh, in our region uh, that you can see how precast concrete gives that look that architect wanted for the temple. 
Now, precast is also high performance, but let's learn what a high performance is first. The United States government defines a high performance structure as one that integrates and optimizes on life cycle basis all major high performance attributes, including everything from energy conservation to operational consideration. And th there are several components that we should consider here. The first is the sustainability uh, for high performance, and that is all procedure and practices we have developed in the last past 10 to 15 years that includes that, that are included in sustainability. In other words, high performance is a larger umbrella that encompasses sustainability and more. The second is that high performance structures integrate and optimize all relevant attributes. Hence, it's not just this or that approach. This is one of the things that lead, for instance, uh, which is an entity that certifies buildings here in the US for uh, sustainability. So lead and other programs have been criticized for, for this one is that they can leave out important concept as part of the design. The third is that high performance looks at performance of structure for the long term, not just the first cost. This shift can influence our decision about design and especially, especially material selection as we look at 50, 60, 70, or beyond uh, 70 years of service life for the structure. So precast concrete is a high performance material that integrates easily with other systems and inherently provides the versatility, efficiency, and resiliency needed to meet the multi-hazard requirements. Also, it meets the long-term demands uh, for the structure itself. So when you take into account optimizing all of the attributes relevant to a structure, sustainability and long-term performance, uh, precast provides all of this in one high performance material. Precast inherently provides many attributes and their related benefits. These have been organized around three higher level concepts. There's versatility, which refers to versatility in aesthetics and design, as well as structure use. And there's efficiency in design, construction, and throughout operations. And then there's resiliency in providing long-term durability and safety. High performance materials provide all three. Now let's take a closer look uh, at some of them. Aesthetic wise, can take a look here, the structures are usually designed to either blend in and match existing architectural, such as on a campus. These often use traditional materials and designs such as dormitory project, uh, this one in uh, Naperville, Illinois, brickstone base. Uh, also, uh, this project, uh, I believe, used insulated structural wall panels when thin brick to match historically buildings. Uh, you, you can find that actually examples of that not only uh, uh, here in Utah, but elsewhere, that there was an existing structure already and they wanted to incorporate a new next to it, but they wanted to have the look of the two structure the same. Um, so precast gave you that option that you can imitate the look of the existing structure with bricks and then put the extension, which is the new building. They also, um, sometimes aesthetic wise, we want a structure to stand out and make a statement, maybe iconic structure, you know, uh, which is the case with this new life and material science building at Penn State University. Uh, it's basically the architect wanted to have this look uh, because of the functionality or use of the building. And for that reason, um, precast offered that uh, static that the building stands out for that purpose. Precast concrete also can come in almost an endless uh, uh, number of colors, basically. Colors normally are created by natural materials such as aggregate, stone or sand. Uh, for instance, here you can see some examples on the screen. Uh, the used flag is an example of the color achievable with pigmented concrete. It's approximate 16 foot by 14 foot wide and is made with integral colored pigment for the blue and red and then white cement backer mix, which was used for part of the face. Uh, and flag has all 50 stars and 13 stripes and has waving the wind effect if seen in profile. So you can see the versatility that precast concrete can offer when it comes to uh, architectural uh, aspects and aesthetics. Precast is also structural material. So exterior envelopes can be designed to carry floor and roof loads, as I mentioned before. This basically eliminates the redundancy of another system for the same purpose, which saves materials to time and often costs. Uh, it also helps contribute to more usable floor space. Another benefit is that precast can be made in almost any shape to fit project needs. This allows for curved shape as well as provides some versatility in designing and optimizing load paths and connection points. Uh, here's another example uh, of versatility of co uh, precast concrete. Now, uh, this is a cool project that I wanna uh, spend a little bit of time on. So precast can be recycled, by the way. As this example shows, it can be crushed and recycled for other uh, uses such as road base. Uh, 
Uh, precast concrete elements are individually engineered, so they can be disassembled and reused in a project expansion or for a different project altogether. For example, the high school stadium that you see on the lower right was one of the four stadiums in the state of Georgia that were created from a disassembled Olympic stadium from the 1996 Olympics. They basically tore down the whole stadium uh, for the Olympics after the Olympics finished, and they were able, I believe, to build 10 stadiums out of the precast sections from that Olympic. So that was a great example of how precast concrete can be recycled uh, because they are basically Legos. If you design the joints demountable, you can take them off easily and put them together for other purposes. High performance structures should also provide for changes in use since often the functional use of structure expires before the structure's physical service life. Precast provides for larger open spaces with less interior column. So building use can be adapted as needs change. <clears throat> because precast is made offsite, other work can also commence on the project side while the precast is being made, such as foundations. While you have superstructure being precast in the prefabricated yard, you can start working on your foundations on site because most of the time foundations are cast in place. Also, precasts arise ready to install and requires no to minimal staging storage or lay down areas, helping to reduce the site footprint. As soon as they arrive to the site, they get assembled, as you see on the left side. Precast concrete also does not contribute to waste or dust, which is a very important uh, um, point here in the United States. So you can see an example of uh, the dust uh, that's created due to uh, on-site construction uh, for cast in place. So actually, most precast plants actually recycle about everything from steel to washout water, practically eliminating any waste. If you do it in a factory, you have good control over it, and you can recycle those elements, uh, which, in contrary for cast in place, is not easy to achieve. <clears throat> precast concrete is erected with a crane and relatively small crew, which allows precast to maintain a small project site footprint. And precast can also be erected in almost any weather, as it winter, fall, spring, or summer, and that reduces delays and allows for quicker enclosure and often project completion uh, before uh, the estimated time. Precast is one of the fastest building system available while minimizing negative effects to a project site. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick video of accelerated construction for the University of Massachusetts uh, in uh, Massachusetts. So let's see if this video plays. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can play this video for you. There you go. <clears throat> so you can see the speed of construction for that building shown um, uh, in the slide. In matter of days, regardless of what weather condition was, the building was completed and it was ready for uh, the client or tenant to come in and start their operations. And that type of speed of construction uh, is something that you cannot beat when it comes to precast concrete. See, in matter of only short time, the whole structure was all ready to go. And then um, the structure uh, it looks pretty good to both architecturally. Uh, this one uh, was in Massachusetts again. Precast concrete has very low uh, water to cement ratio compared to conventional concrete, and it has high strength and low permeability. Uh, and that means it is more durable and it's capable of a long service life or even up to 100 years. This is a Baha'i temple in Illinois. It has been around for about 60 years, actually closer to 90 because the construction of this temple started in the 1920s. It is clad with architectural precast concrete. Other structures such as bridges today are required to have a service life of 75 or more. And precast actually can help uh, contractors meet this high performance need, uh, such as the example shown on the slide. After nearly 90 years, it's as good as it was when it was constructed. And now towards the uh, later end of my presentation, I wanna elaborate a little bit on quality assurance and quality control uh, for precast concrete. So the first thing is we need to know what is Precast Pre-Stress Concrete Institute, PCI. Uh, PCI was formed in 1954 and it's a technical institute for precast concrete structures industry. And PCI has had the you know, uh, 
many projects uh, developing those in partnership with academia and industry and contributing to the body of knowledge for precast concrete industry. And now it's recognized as one of the top technical institute and trade associations in the US. PCI purposes to advance the use of high quality precast concrete in structures. And PCI does that through collaboration over 250 precast plants across North America who volunteer tens of thousands of hours each year to bring bigger, faster, stronger, and more aesthetically interesting concrete products to the built market. PCI certification is recognized as a leading uh, and one of the most widely specified quality assurance program in the construction industry. It is, it is specified or accepted by all major specification entities and government bodies in the United States and Canada. The reason these entities rely on PCI is because, our, because PCI's comprehensive certification program includes in um, plant production and the field installation auditing to assure that all products are manufactured and installed to stringent industry standards. Uh, the photo that you see here is from One South uh, First Domino Sugar Factory in New York. A certification is extremely important to the design and construction community because uh, as the quote reads, People want, want, people want to build good buildings. After all, their reputations hang in the balance. And of course, it is always more expensive to fix something that is to do it the right way the first time. Beyond just doing it right the first time, following an established certification program actually reduces contractors risk and ensures that products will perform as expected for the life of the structure. A certification program must be based on established and biased a quality assurance system, which is an integrated and ongoing collection of practices focused on consistently achieving predictable outcomes. To achieve predictable, predictable outcomes, a manufacturer or service company must follow a defined process that will yield a consistent result. Uh, we sometimes use the analogy making precast is like baking a cake, basically. To be consistent, you have to not only follow the recipe, you must ensure the ingredients meet your standards, the batter is mixed properly for the specific amount of time, it is baked, baked in the same pan, and it's perfect temperature every time. Any variation in the process will most likely yield unfavorable results, obviously. Every precast producer is required to have certified quality control personnel on, on, on staff. An internal quality control department will ensure that the facility is following the defined process. Quality control is the operational activities used to fulfill the requirements of the quality assurance system and includes testing, inspection, and documentation. QC is a critical component to ensure the recipe is followed and the desired outcome is reached. Quality is not a sometime activity, it's an all the time activity. It is 100% commitment that yields more benefits than a high quality dependable uh, product. It helps ensure a safe working environment for our plant personnel. Now, certification in general sense means that an object, person, or organization has met a specific requirement and is labeled as competent to practice in that area. And there are, you can see, three categories of it. For products, assurance that each product meets a specification and is inspected. For people, assurance that the people can perform specific tasks or functions at, as conducting inspections, operating machinery, or teaching others. And for process, audits the quality assurance program to ensure the process is complete. Now, when it comes to precast concrete, QC and QA, safety and quality, number one priority is safety. Society relies on civil engineers to keep them safe and safe during the construction process, safe during the structure's life cycle and safe during deconstruction. And also the next one is durability. We want to have, or a client would like to have little to no maintenance costs for their structure. At the same time, they want to reduce workers' risk. They want to have thermal efficiency in the building to maintain consistent interior temperatures. And they also want to have the structure protected from natural disasters such as hurricane, tornadoes, or earthquakes. The best approach to ensure a structure is built in accordance with safe design practices is to design with prefabricated certified products that follow a documented process. By using prefabricated products, you will reduce your risk by reducing the number of workers on site. This will most often require that the design construction team uh, work with a certified specialty contractor who follows a quality assurance program. One of the critical steps to ensure a safe design is to request that your installer provided a complete pre-construction plan in writing. As we have learned, quality assurance applies equally to a product, the system, and a process which is vital to building and safe structure. 
for the life of structure because safety and quality are directly linked to meet overall performance expectations. Uh, this one, the project that you see is the American Saving Banks headquarters in Honolulu, Hawaii, for instance. Benefit of certification, again, is it assures that what is designed is what is built. It enables pre-qualification better, it reduces your risk, highest probability of a successful project, and helps ensure that the finished product meets your expectations. Uh, in fact, PCI, when they do the certification or recertification process for the plants, they make unannounced visits. Uh, uh, year, yearly, they just, without any notice, they just show up at the plant and they check if the quality control uh, and quality assurance uh, are met. How do you select the certification program? It basically depends understanding the basis for the program and who administers the program. As I mentioned, there's PCI, there's NPCA, what kind of products they are, there are different methodology for each, and then defining the requirement for the project and aligning your project's needs with the appropriate certification program. The most effective programs are those that are part of a comprehensive quality system and tied directly to an industry body of knowledge. Uh, PCI has been certifying plants since 1967 in this country, as well as in Canada. And you can see that all PCI producers are certified in different categories, either as architectural precast, structural precast, bridge product, or glass fiber reinforced concrete GFRC. They make the two unannounced audits per year by an independent third party engineering company, as I mentioned, they just show up at the plant. And erector certification program, there's another one that the installer must meet procedural and safety protocols when they put these pieces together on site. Now with that one, I would like to um, conclude my presentation with, pre with one slide about precast concrete education. Now, now I have to wear my professor's hat and for most of my colleagues who are in academia, um, they might have seen that Precast concrete is not part of the core civil engineering curriculum in many schools around the world, including the United States. And normally precast concrete is the last lecture in reinforced concrete. And that means the students who graduate from civil engineering programs, when they go work for a department of transportation or for a city or for a state a utility or services department, they have minimal exposure to precast concrete, how to design with it, how to, how precast works, what are the limitations, what are the versatility. And we want to change that trend at least here at Idaho State University. So uh, here at the PCI Foundation and NPCA Foundation, uh, they funded us to have a concrete studio, a precast concrete studio uh, for four years with financial support from, uh, pri from the private industry and many industry champions, because we would like to make sure that the students are exposed to precast concrete before they leave uh, our school. And that has been a wonderful uh, addition to our program. And precast concrete studio is a very hands-on class that we have here at Idaho State University. As you can see, a lot of activities with students, we take them to tour precast yards, we take them to our laboratories to go and mix concrete, and at the same time test concrete uh, when the time uh, comes for large scale testing. Uh, so some conclusions here, high performance structures, they integrate and optimize all relevant attributes. They focus on long-term performance and are built sustainability wise and resiliency wise. And remember that high performance material must be versatile, efficient, and resilient. They provide long-term performance. Precast concrete is versatile, offers a virtually endless area of colors if it comes to architectural design. Finishes can be combined too to reduce time, cost, and risk, and can be used as structural and enclosure system, can be recycled and reused, and easier adaptation, improves service life. And precast concrete is efficient, accelerates construction, allows for a smaller site footprint, combines continuous insulation, air and vapor barriers into one product, improves thermal efficiency by as much as 30%, reducing operational costs and energy and reduces overall life cycle cost, uh, which means saving money for the client, requires list trades, coordination and detailing, and also provides a high degree of quality. And precast concrete is resilient, durable. You can target a service life of 100 years for it and provide multi-hazard protection, inherent passive fire protection, 
improves occupants' comfort and safety, and no mold, VOCs, excellent sound insulation, and less temperature fluctuation. And with that, uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, the American Society of Civil Engineers India section, the Builders Association of India, ISU, uh, PCI Mountain States, uh, the NPCA, NPCA Foundation, PCI Foundation, and the PCI. And these are my contact details on this slide. Uh, we, I'm also on LinkedIn. We have a research website if you're interested to go and see some of the research we have been doing. And with that one, thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Many thanks, Dr. Mustafa, for your uh, such a clear uh, concept sharing about precast uh, construction and specifically I will uh, I should put it like this that our country India is in acute need of this technology the government has launched number of projects for smart cities where as I understand we can uh, use the technology in a very big way from underground drainage to bridges to infrastructure development where the reputation is very high and with a population of uh, 130 crore people uh, we are very thankful for the such an eye-opener presentation from your end now i request professor ravi sinha dean of iit mumbai professor of civil engineering department and professor rajiv gupta from Bits Pilani, from Department of Civil Engineering, to take over for the question answer session. So right now, uh, uh, let us start the session, then we'll decide how much time is should be permitted. Over to uh, Professor Ravi and Professor Rajiv. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, has been an excellent presentation. And uh, I'm sure that uh, there are many questions which people are having. So in case you are having any question, please raise your hand and we will uh, be able to at least uh, include a few of the questions. I see that some people have already raised their hands. Uh, so uh, can we uh, have the question from uh, Mr. Amin Sayyad? Mr. Amin Sayyad, unmute yourself. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask uh, regarding uh, development of some uh, standard, code standard for uh, pre-stress, precast concrete pavement technology. Is there any specific standard in US for that? That's a very good question. Yes, there are. Uh, if you go to National Precast Concrete Association website, NPCA, you will see uh, many resources they have on that technology. Uh, also, you can take a look at the Department of Transportation in the US that uses that technology. For instance, Nevada and California, they might have even additional uh, standards. And most of the time, these standards are in public domain and you don't have to purchase them. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, please uh, lower your hands after your question is done. Uh, can uh, can we request uh, Mr. Mir Muhammad Ali Khan? Uh, Mr. Muhammad, I mean, unmute yourself, sir. Uh. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. please ask your question. Yeah. In India, usually in precast, because I have been associated in precast in India for last 10 years, usually people are not satisfied with the joints. Uh, they are more worried about leakages and seepages. Is there any new advancement in joints? Thank you for your question. Again, that's a very important topic. Yes, PCI, uh, at least PCI in the US has been continuously looking to improve performance of connections uh, for durability as well as resiliency. Uh, again, if you are referred to PCI website, and in fact, the PCI design handbook that I'm part of, uh, there's a whole chapter on connections, the whole chapter on design consideration and design process for precast connections. And uh, the issues you mentioned uh, are actually the ones that will or addressed in that chapter at PCI manual. Yes, there is. Mustafa, one, one of the things that I'd like to share 
the joint issues that I have noticed in India and other places, it's not in the design, it is in the construction quality and, you know, and erection process. I think that's where the majority of the issue comes in, in terms of leak and so on, that impacts the long-term durability and life of the product as well. So I think, you know, in India, my recommendation is it's the, the skilled labor, the inspection, the erection, those kinds of folk, that's the, that's the area that we need to focus on. I don't believe it's a design issue. Great, thank, thank you very much. Uh, sir, just a small inter uh, intervention in between. Uh, we have circulated a feedback form. Now I request all the participants here to kindly fill up this feedback form and resubmit it for it is required for our records and for the uh, distribution of e certificates for participation in the, in the seminar. So it is request to one and all to kindly please fill up the form. Thank you. So, uh, so we have a few more questions and I request other people also to raise your hands if you would like to ask questions. Uh, so I, I now invite uh, my colleague, Professor Rajiv Gupta. Uh, uh, Ravi Sinha, sir, Professor, sir. There's one Mr. Vakil yes. Ahmed who has raised his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, uh, but, uh, I am requesting Professor uh, Rajiv Gupta, uh, Secretary of ASC India Section Western Region, and Professor Edward Spilani to conduct the rest of the question and answer session. Okay. So maybe we'll start with Mr. Rajendra Pawar. Mr. Power, unmute yourself. Mr. Power, you are muted. Mr. Power, unmute yourself. Ah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm Rajendra Power. Uh, just a question to uh, the speaker. Is, uh, so far in the presentation, we have seen the usage of RCC basically, uh, on uh, mass scale in different varieties of precasting. Whether we have tried uh, the different kind of materials, like uh, say, uh, concrete with fibers, or maybe uh, like uh, ferro cement materials in uh, precast construction on mass scale. Please elaborate on this. Thank you. Uh, that's a good question. So. Uh, there are many uh, advanced materials making their way to precast concrete here in this country. Uh, for instance, there is the ultra high performance concrete that now is getting tra traction and precast business. Uh, it's basically super strong uh, fibrous concrete material that they use to connect the dug bolt trees or precast girders for bridge structures. They just run that closure pour and it acts more like a super glue. Uh, it has 10 times or nine times stronger than normal concrete. So. The answer to your question is yes, uh, they use fibers, not only uh, propylene fiber, but also steel fibers. And every precaster uh, has tons of data on their mixes, uh, as well as the performance of those concrete mixes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, so before we go to the next question by Mr. Vakil Ahmad, uh, I request the host to uh, provide the link through the chat where the feedback is to be given because some people are not able to get the feedback. It is there in the chat box. I, it is there in the chat box. Uh, Madam, uh, can you just repost it? Yeah, and uh, so, so can you unmute Mr. Vakil Ahmed, please? Yeah. Mr. Ahmed, I'm, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sir. Hello. Sir, uh, my question is, as uh, we know, nothing is without limitations. What are the limitations of the precast structural elements? Do you hear me? Okay, so very good question. There are limitations with precast concrete when it comes to transportation. Remember that it comes from a precast yard and there are limitations on how big the section and what is allowed on the roads. You cannot drive with any loads on, uh, you know, on the highways here. So when the sections are too big, that's one limitation because it might not be cost effective. The transportation may cost more. Uh, another limitation is that it just requires a skilled labors, uh, as Dr. Guna mentioned. So not everybody can pull tendons in their back.
backyard and uh, you know make a pre-stress section. Uh, also, um, for instance, some states in this country they have one or two precasters only because it's such a big operation. A precaster is like hundred acre, eighty acre precast yard. Uh, so not every state has uh, you know all products. So that's why for they have to get their products from elsewhere and that costs money so transportation can increase uh, those are the main limitations of uh, precast concrete one last limitation is depends also if it's a seismic zone and you cannot provide enough connection between the element and that's uh, another limitation for precast concrete uh, that people used to go for cast in place instead the other one most of is yeah. also you know i can notice this in india the limitations transportation could be a major hindrance in transporting these elements. And also, you know, one of the things that I've noticed in precast is if you're not handling it with kid, kid gloves and handling yeah. the elements carefully, you could have cracks and other kinds of issues develop in the process of transportation of the elements. And that could be a problem in terms of long-term durability of the material as well. Very good points. I, I, I concur, yes. Those are uh, important points. They're very flimsy and fragile elements until they are secured. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, for the next question, can I invite Mr. Suresh Ramchandani? Uh, sir, unmute yourself, Mr. Suresh Ramchandani. Uh, okay, maybe he is uh, away from yeah, the microphone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Jushan Abdullah. Mr. Abdullah, unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me the floor. And uh, it was an in, uh, informative session, and I'm an undergrad student. Mm -hmm. So I just had a sort of out of my curiosity the, the question. And, sir, so as we know that the, in, for concrete mixed design, we have to select uh, binder materials, mainly cements. Uh, so for any precast or pre-stressed concrete, uh, can we use any sort of supplementary cementitious material as uh, a replacement or partial replacement for the cement? In, like the GDB or so like a fume? So please yep. can you the the yeah, sure. So that's actually a common practice now here uh, anywhere in the United States, not only for precast or for cast in place, uh, cementitious materials such as silica fume and fly ash are now part of the mix. Uh, that material that I uh, mentioned, UHPC, ultra high performance concrete, that actually has both silica fume and fly ash. And fly ash actually makes it workable, gives it durability. Even in uh, conventional uh, concrete or high strength concrete, precaster always has a portion of cement replaced with uh, fly ash uh, to make sure that that you know, uh, it gives that durability and at the same time, you're reducing the carbon footprint of the concrete mix. Okay, can, can uh, we next go to Ami Patel? Mr. Ami Patel, unmute yourself. Ah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, I have one question regarding the precast. Uh, can we use the some part of uh, e-waste uh, or electronic waste processes? So uh, when it comes to precast concrete, as I mentioned, precast concrete structures are as good as ingredients uh, or the concrete that you're pouring. So right now, I'm not aware of a precast uh, yard in the United States that uses recycled products or recycled uh, items and concrete mix because they're normally shooting for 10,000 PSI, 12,000 PSI concrete. And that means like 60 MPA. And for that reason, um, I haven't seen them that they can achieve that compressive strength uh, with uh, putting recycled parts or plastic particles in the concrete. Also, it's a question of quality control and assurance, as I mentioned. Um, so if there are data and knowledge to support it, um, there could be people open to that, which I think is a good idea for recycling. Yeah, and also, also if I can add, durability is not well established for these kind of mixes whether the concrete would last for 50 to 100 years. So uh, that's also becoming an issue. So those things have to be resolved. Uh, can we next go to Bhushan Abhade? Mr. Bhushan, unmute yourself. Hello, hi, everybody. Hello. Hi, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, in my housing concrete, I mean, uh, for this uh, precast project, what has been observed that 
uh, in monsoon region where we have the monsoon density is very high in those areas uh, we face some water leakage problem the waterproofing is the problem for this uh, the cast sediment so do you think uh, how this uh, waterproofing work will be more challenging into this area uh, definitely there are buildings as you mentioned even in other countries that has that problem and again uh, that comes uh, on uh, the design the whole envelope for the structure how the design was accomplished and the quality control uh, what dr guna mentioned in terms of tolerances and the connections uh, what was on the drawings what it was built uh, certainly precast buildings especially parking lots uh, parking garages because they don't have any windows or anything uh, you know you have to go and maintain them after some time like you know replacing the sealant in the joints so it doesn't leak uh, so there will be maintenance costs for for particularly those open type of structures. Uh, but uh, if the building envelope of precast is built uh, and uh, constructed properly, uh, we have tons of those buildings out here in this country that have been performing close to their service life or beyond without any issue. So again, it's a question of quality control. Uh, it's not a question of climate. So we'll go to the last few questions. Uh, can I invite uh, Mr. Sushil Agarwal next? Agarwal ji, Mr. Sushil ji, please unmute yourself. Ah. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Sushil. You... Sorry, you have muted yourself please again. Okay. Agar... Ah. No, you are muting and unmuting. Uh, no, it's he... ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Right, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> Sir, I'm um, quite curious about uh, if we can use this precast technology for building water storage tanks, overhead water, water storage tanks. In India, we have a lot many water storage tanks to be built in the next three, four years under a, under a flagship program of Prime Minister Jal Jivan Mission, where he intends to provide water to every house through pipeline only. So we have to build a lot of Water storage tanks in lakhs of lakhs numbers. And we don't have uh, that kind of uh, skilled manpower for that. So can we use this technology for overhead water tank? Yes, the answer to your question is yes. There are precast, pre-stressed water tanks. Uh, not only water tanks, for any other type of pressure vessels even, you can use them. Uh, it, um, it depends, you know, uh, is it pre-tensioning or post-tensioning? But certainly uh, it's possible to do it. Uh, and there are examples of it out there um, in, in the US and elsewhere. Okay. okay. Thanks. Can I now invite Mr. Ramchandra Nitukar? Mr. Nitukar, Ranvik. Ah, okay. Hello. Yeah. I'm, I'm RK Nitukar, retired C, uh, WRD, Maharashtra, India. My question is, sir, uh, I am a water resources engineer. Can we use this precast, uh, this, uh, this particular uh, manufacturing, this uh, uh, prefabricated uh, panel for the construction of the hydraulic structures? Whether such uh, uh, implementation is there in the America, USA, where they, where they, have, they have used for the hydraulic sectors? That's a very good question. Thanks for that. Uh, in fact, uh, this is something that's coming up here in this country. Uh, there is, I, I'm aware of the research of it. The Department of Energy in the United States is looking into something called mo modular hydropower dams. Uh, and there is a precaster, the um, Old Castle infrastructure, uh, that they have developed the solution that they can build you a dam. Uh, it's not a really, really big dam. It's uh, quite small, but out of precast concrete sections. Uh, right now, it has not been implemented. It's still in the research phase because there are a lot of questions regarding uh, transportation transportation and then some obviously on-site work for it. But uh, this is something that I would see precast uh, going in the next 10 to 20 years. That will be a new market for precast because uh, having that modularity prefabrication is something that the energy sector is moving to. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we next go to Professor Tom Isley, please? Well, thank, thank you very much. It's been a very interesting session. Most of my work is focused on the underground infrastructure, and I'm seeing um, an increase in utilization of uh, polymer concrete precast uh, 
elements for manhole, uh, sewer pipe, and most recently for uh, tunnel, uh, tunnel precast tunnel liner segments. And uh, back last fall, I did a uh, workshop in Dubai on developing underground space and asset management of underground infrastructure and became more aware of the tunnel that's being designed in Dubai where uh, polymer concrete precast structures, uh, 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 tunnel liner segments have been approved. I'm just curious as to what do you see as, uh, as the future of uh, polymer concrete for precast structures? Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Um, so the polymer concrete that you mentioned, as, uh, there's a, a competitor to it too, the ultra high performance concrete, but it depends the application side. UHPC normally goes after bridges, uh, while as you mentioned, the uh, polymer one uh, is more for the NPCA type of products. Uh, I would say definitely as the need for uh, resilient and durable infrastructure and, you know, is coming especially with uh, President Biden's uh, new infrastructure plan. I will certainly see more applications of fiber concrete. To my knowledge right now, um, the polymer, excuse me, to my knowledge right now, the challenges with it is it sits quickly. It's not something that you can mix uh, in a batch plan in mass quantity. Uh, also, uh, the cost of it could be a deterring factor. But I think that as you have more bat batch plants uh, or more companies, Companies producing such a product, and hopefully at some point we will have non-proprietary version of it. Uh, then there will be more application, and the cost should also come down. So uh, I think that that is definitely a potential material for future uh, come um, coming years. Thank you, and Dr. T K Sundram, please unmute yourself. Uh, sir, this was a long, good uh, presentation. Actually, we which we have seen in the recent past. One thing is, actually, even in the bridges, they are using the segmental construction, but uh, you did not cover the same uh, in this. That's what I find. Is there, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. But uh, you did not cover the bridges uh, elaborately or you did not cover at all. But uh, most of the uh, pre-cost construction is in India is uh, in bridges only. Buildings, it has not developed much. Many of the buildings which were constructed have been uh, probably abandoned even. In some of the buildings in uh, Chennai, they have abandoned long back and they cannot be occupied at all because of the leakages and because of uh, other cracks and all those things. How do we uh, educate the people to adopt these things and where is the institution for that in India? It is not there at all. The contractors are well, not well trained except in the bridges. That's what I want to see. Any response on that? Thank you for your uh, feedback. Uh, so for this particular presentation, uh, uh, I was asked to focus it more on the building aspect, but I'm happy to do even a future one on bridges because that's what my expertise is uh, nowadays That's what I'm testing for precast concrete bridges. Uh, so uh, segmental bridge construction is definitely a big market for precast concrete. The process that it utilizes is way different actually than a normal precasting because for segmental, these are gigantic projects that the precast yard is actually at the site. They produce the segments because these segments, some of them are pretty gigantic size. They cannot transfer so they have the plant right there next to the bridge. And these projects normally are in billions of dollars, at least in this country, when they have a project of that scale. And uh, they use post-tensioning to connect the segments together, the shear keys and uh, same similar tendons and grouting. So uh, hopefully if there was a opportunity in the future, uh, uh, maybe in person next time, I'll be happy to talk on precast concrete bridges more, uh, especially on segmental side. The Indian contractors are well trained in this. More than $100 billion are being constructed, a bridge construction. They are using it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. so we will go with the last question now by uh, Ms. Anjali NY. Ms. Anjali, unmute you. Anjali. Ah. I've just completed my post graduation in structural engineering. And uh, my question is that uh, oh, in the normal, uh, you know, the conventional completing process, we can see in a few years, we can see shrinkage cracks and all that in the walls. So uh, 
does that uh, happen in the precast concrete also is it similar uh, thank you anjali and congratulations on your graduation uh, that's actually uh, a good question. So when it's pre-stressed concrete, since the concrete is already in compression, you're transferring those uh, stresses and the tendons to as a compression force on the face of concrete, the chances of a crack appearing is low. Uh, compared to conventional reinforced concrete. At the same time, we use high strength concrete for uh, uh, precasting. And you know that when the compressive strength of concrete is up, the modulus of rupture is up, the tension resistance is up. And that means that there's little chance uh, of a cracking compared to a lower grade concrete. Uh, but nonetheless, even pre-stressed precast sections, uh, after some time, uh, especially if it's overloaded or there's also creep issue with concrete, it will cause eventually some cracking, but those cracks are not gonna get bigger or longer. That's the important point, that if you have compression on the section, if there's even some cracking, they are not getting bigger compared to what you would see in reinforced concrete. And that's also increasing the durability of the structure. I always say there are two types of concrete. There's a concrete that has crack and the concrete to crack. So <laughs> eventually it will crack. So, so well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been a very, very interactive uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the speaker has shared his uh, email address and contact details. And I request all of you with follow-up questions and more information to contact him directly. I now hand over the, uh, uh, the, the place to the MC. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ravi, for conducting this question answer session. And I really uh, thank uh, Dr. Mustafa for giving total clear concept what was possible in this one session with the limitations also to more than 250 participants around the world. Now, in order to give the concluding remark, I request Mr. Anand Sinha, uh, sorry, Dr. Anand Gupta uh, from Builder Session of India, who is the chairman of Housing and RERA Committee and who has more than 40 years of experience in the construction business with numerous heads on his, uh, 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 numerous feathers on his head of uh, being into construction of buildings, infrastructure projects, being associated as a spoke, spokesperson for Builder Session of India. He has been general secretary for Builder Session of India and has been the treasurer also earlier. Number of townships projects have been executed under his uh, he has been awarded the degree of Doctor of Honours in Construction Industries from some renowned universities. Over to Dr. Gupta for the concluding remark. Uh, go good evening, friends. I hope you all can hear me. Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, friends, today's webinar that is precast in mass construction of real estate and infrastructure projects initiated by Builder Center of India and American Society of Civil Engineers, uh, Indian, uh, Western India chapter. Firstly, I appreciate the efforts of these, both the organization for taking up this most valuable subject, which is a need of this hour. And more particularly, this is a need of hour for country like India and all the developing country, particularly as it uh, assures the quality and the timely completion of the projects, which is right now lacking in this part of the country. Presently, Indian government is on political mission to provide housing for all by 2024. And I'm sure this webinar, and uh, as our expert of, um, the speaker has already pointed out, probably will give a good learning <coughs> who are involved in completing the political mission of government of India. Friends, our expert speaker, Dr. Mustafa has pointed out that in precast, 
we can maintain quality consistency we but uh, timely completion as compared to cast and situ concrete high strength of concrete can also be used and uh, it uh, as it is being used in usa which right now probably cannot be used in cast and situ various types of precast products are available uh, as as he mentioned that they are being used in united states particularly for all the the housing projects drainage work road work and all other kind of infrastructure he also pointed out that even the pre stressed precast concrete can also be used for uh, time advantage and durability advantage our expert speaker also pointed out that this standardized section of precast can be used for the mold and we can save the shuttering cost and repetition cost as being used in usa precast can be used for all kind of uh, sections of the rcc that is column beam slabs staircase panels walls etc he also pointed out that these are also usable uh, uh, having a better performance on other aspect like safety environment quality and even time friends as i am a person from the industry i personally feel as a person from the industry that if prefab technology is used as suggested by our expert speaker probably we can complete the reform in the reform in quality and timely completion of all the real estate projects as well as infrastructure projects with this i would like to conclude my uh, remark i also would like to make a little one announcement for on this special occasion the uh, our committee our housing and rural committee of builders of india and american society of civil engineer western uh, the america uh, indian chapter uh, will be organizing a one additional uh, webinar on 9th of october uh, that is saturday 9th of october uh, and the speaker is going to be dr mo from horizon usa on the structural repair of the building and, and at the, it is going to be at the same time on saturday on 9th october i request all the uh, uh, delegate to make a note of it they can make a use of it thank you thank you thank you dr anand gupta for excellent conclusion remark conclusion remark on the program uh, it has already been more than uh, one and a half hours uh, i request dr uh, mr r r shridhar from builders session of india to give vote of thanks yeah uh yes, can i yeah yeah, yeah please audible yeah yeah on behalf of uh, builders association of india as co organizer uh, we would like to uh, thank the board of ac iswr uh, dr guna from usa and dr mustafa from the usa dr elias from uae mr uh, tom smith ac usa Uh, Mrs. Nevis, EAC, USA; uh, Dr. Tom Ayle, Professor, Purdue University, uh, USA; uh, Mr. Carlo from Mexico; Mr. Sunil Joshi from Canada; Mr. Rajendra Pawar; Mr. Tilak Raj Kapoor; Mr. Ram Chandani; and uh, Mr. Rajput for being master of ceremony; and Mr. Anand Gupta ji; Mr. Arvind Shah. Dr. Kamal from Sri Lanka, Region Ten, Governor AAC, and special thanks to Engineer Ravindra to take initiative for for this uh, webinar. And uh, on behalf of uh, both the associations, once again extend a wonderful thanks for a beautiful and a very very interact, a very uh, highly qualified uh, session. And hope to see you all again, as Mr. Anu Gupta said on the October ninth. And let's let's move on from there. Thank you so much. ये तो चेपे रहने वाल के वाल के तेली वाला
I thank Hello. you all for your kind participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Sanjay, and I will say. Doctor Guna, can I call you? Yeah, please. In a couple of minutes. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, all. Thank you, thank you everyone for a lovely See session. Thank bye you. bye, and thank you all. Right. Madhu, I think we should disconnect now. Yeah, yeah, I'll stop it. Yeah.